Good morning, and thank you for joining us today for a joint webinar from both Hydroscape and HydroPoint. The topic of today's conversation is how California schools and cities are outsmarting the drought. We will be focusing on smart water management best practices and technology solutions that are proven to save water. So first off, my name is Meg Mason. I'm a marketing director here at HydroPoint, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. For those of you that don't know, HydroPoint is a smart water management company headquarters in Petaluma, which is just north of San Francisco. We are the makers of WeatherTrack smart irrigation controllers, innovative flow management solutions, and the cloud-based water management platform. And today's guest speakers are a couple of California smart water management experts. Our first is David Chandler. He is the Energy and Sustainability Commissioner for the Monterey Peninsula Unified School District, who has done an amazing job in his school district and reduced their entire district water use by a whopping 42%. And also on the call today are two of Hydroscape's experts in their technical services department. We have Eric Anderson and Steve Fry. Thank you all three of you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So um, again, thanks Eric and Steve for partnering up on this webinar with Hydroscape. And let's go ahead and let's dive right in. Um, we're going to try our hardest to keep this webinar under 30 minutes. Um, and note that we are going to be recording this session, so it will be available online afterwards. So if you do have to jump off at any time, don't worry. You can always watch the rest of it on your own schedule. And if at any time you have any questions for either myself or any of the other speakers, feel free on the right-hand side of the WebEx portal, there's a Q&A section. So feel free to um, type in any questions you may have for any of us in that Q&A section, and we will uh, read them off at the end and hopefully get some answers for you. So let's go ahead and start talking about this big thing that's on everybody's mind these days, the drought. As you probably know, 17% of the United States is in moderate to extreme drought. And as looking at that United States map, you can see most of that is concentrated in good old California. So in just California, 99.86% is abnormally dry, and 46% of California is in the, the exceptional drought stage, which is the worst drought scenario. So on April 1st, our governor made an executive order to mandate that everyone in California reduces their water use by 25%. So I'm guessing, as most of us are, how on earth are we going to achieve this big goal? And especially with many sites and properties that are facing other challenges in addition to just this 25% mandate. So along with these new water management re requirements, which can be everything from day of the week or time of day restrictions, only watering twice a week, Tuesday, Thursdays, what number is your house, is it an even number, is it an odd number, those kinds of things. But now we're getting fines and then of course increasing water prices. Then also let's go to some of the hidden costs of unmanaged overwatering. There are, with most places having 58% of urban water that goes to landscapes, and a lot of those landscapes are being overwatered anywhere from 30 to 300%. So a lot of this excessive water waste can actually cause additional property damage, you know, poor landscape health, pollution runoff, not to mention any sort of liabilities and risks. And especially if you're going to a school district and you have kids playing on a soccer field, a football field, in a park, playground structure, you definitely do not want over flooding, you don't want water issues because you don't want any liabilities for any kids or students getting hurt. And then also for a lot of schools and cities, even parks, many have old irrigation systems. Many of those are outdated, the infrastructure is not what it used to be, and then add in limited budget, reduced staff, and then in some cases at some schools we have internet security walls, firewall issues, add all this together, and this sounds like a big headache. <laughs> so 
let's talk to someone that has tackled all these problems and in the process reduced their water by the whopping 42%. So David Chandler is um, our energy commissioner from Monterey Peninsula Unified School District. Um, it's a school district in the central coast of California. They have 26 schools. Um, and with, you know, they previously used 70% of their water was used for irrigation and their price of water had increased up to 29%. So I'll go ahead and um, hand it over to you, David, to give us a little bit more background of, you know, what the challenges you faced and how you've accomplished all your big goals. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, um, my name's David, and um, when I started this, um, this position, Two years ago, uh, water was actually completely out of control. We we were watering, and we were, we basically we weren't thinking about the drought one bit. Mm -hmm. And once I started the position, we started thinking about conserving water before the big announcement of um, having to change. And we, really, it was just to get a handle on water conservation itself. And we, we did this first by changing the way the maintenance department thought about water, knowing that uh, someone was watching, but also trying to get the school district to give the tools to the irrigation person that would allow them to do their job professionally. And we had a hydropoint controller at 11 sites. I wrote a grant, and we got it at. Uh, we ended up uh, this the school year with um, with 27 uh, controllers from uh, HydroPoint. Um, so really, that was a huge step. It was saying, "Hey, your job's important, and we're going to give you the tools to allow you to do your job professionally." Awesome. Since then, the superintendent, and um, because of the drought. We've purchased uh, 29 more controllers, and we have 46 installed across the district. So we're actually almost at 100% um, weather-based controllers. So all our irrigation, which is 64 acres in the Monterey Peninsula. D David, I have a quick question for you. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys have a specific water manager, or did you train all of your employees to well, operate the system? Uh, good, good question. Um, we actually have one person who's the irrigation tech within the grounds department. And um, at this time, that, that person's received light training. Um, we haven't gone to the full training yet. That's actually scheduled for the, the beginning of the school year. We're actually going to have five of our staff trained. And as a water manager, I'm kind of in that role of, of water manager because I'm, I'm doing all of the, the bill analysis. All right. Great. Does that uh, answer your question? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about um, how WeatherTrack has helped, helped your schools because I know um, you guys have benefited from using, you know, things like the app or the online web portal. What other kinds of things has WeatherTrack helped uh, your team out with? Well, the the, the biggest thing helps, it helps um, since we only have one irrigation tech, it allows for remote access. So our irrigation tech can um, can basically turn on the system and test the system remotely. So he doesn't have to uh, go to the valve, turn it on, run to the sprinkler head run back to the valve, it mm -hmm. saves him a lot of time, which is what he was doing before the weather tracks were put in place. Got it. And I remember... So, oh, go ahead. From, a, from a, a water conservation side of things, it allows me to see what the schedules are. It allows me to see um, if there's been a, a rain pause put into place, that type of thing. So I'm able to see full access of the scheduling. Great. And I remember you did some analysis saying um, that if, if in, on one of your sites you had a broken sprinkler head, 
and you said that one of those, just a single broken sprinkler head could leak anywhere from 81 to 126 gallons per minute. How has, yes. how has WeatherTrack helped with those types of scenarios? Well, um, at this stage, it started the conversation. Um, we have two sites that have flow sensors and master valves installed, so it's actually set a standard that we want to try and achieve. Out of our, we have 32 fields um, that, are, that are used, and only two of them have flow sensors at this time. But the conversation is happening that we need to get all our fields retrofitted with flow sensors and master valves to avoid these expensive leaks. And by having the, um, the the weather track at every single site, we now have the the tools to allow for that retrofit to take place. Got it. Now, have you had trouble updating all of your systems from the old infrastructure to weather track, or has it been relatively easy? What has what has that whole process been like? Well, we received the um, the. So the 27 new controllers um, on in June, and as of this date, we have installed 22 of them wow. within basically a two-week span. That's it's great. been it's been very easy. The last six are more challenging because we're converting manual valves and um, battery-operated valves to electrical. So that one's going to take more time. Because of um, because of the valve switch out and the running of the electric wires. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, let me ask you. I know you had mentioned um, that you guys are adding flow sensing to a lot of your sites. Um, what made you make that change, and and how um, you know what sorts of benefits are you seeing from adding flow, um, all different sorts of flow products to your sites? When I started this job in 2013. Um, we had a school site that had a $45,000 irrigation leak. Wow. And then we had another school a month later that had a $24,000 irrigation leak. So cost effective, cost need. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Because our, our irrigation systems are pretty much around 40 years old. Wow. And, and Meg, correct me if I'm wrong, but the weather track controllers work with both the normally closed master valves or normally open when you have quick couplers and stuff, like in a sports field? Correct. 100% correct, yes. Wow, 40-year-old system. Wow. So let me ask you this, David, is we're um, with these huge bills, you know, $45,000, $24,000, um, when you went for um, to get more irrigation controllers, were there any sorts of like rebates available? Anything that even helped with the cost? Well, when we uh, we have three different water districts okay. in Monterey Peninsula: uh, Calam, City of Seaside, and Marina Coast. Uh, Calam and um, uh, Calam works with the provider, which is Monterey Peninsula Water Management District. And they were the ones that purchased the first 26 uh, controllers. So we got those through a grant. Uh -huh. And so they basically gave us 120000 to do the first set of controllers. That's great. And then Calam also gave us a $30,000 grant for, uh, for, um, for MP rotors so we could um, upgrade the sprinkler heads. Wow, and um, and then Marie, and then Monterey Peninsula Water Management also gave us a grant so that we could do drought. We were originally going to do flow centers and master valves, mm -hmm. but we realized that our our irrigation system was so old that contractors would not be able to put flow centers and master valves in. So we changed the grant to a drought tolerant. With a with a, a knowledge now that we need to retrofit fields yeah. to get the flow sensors and master valves in place. For for Marina Coast, that's where the last controllers are being installed, mm -hmm. and Marina Coast is offering uh, rebates, 
but they are very, very minimal. Minimal. Okay. About a, about a $150 per controller because they're basically Marina Coast is set up more for residential rebates than it is for commercial rebates. Got it. So, Meg, it seems like the flow sensing is really half of the smart controller. We have the weather adjusting our run times up and down and adding and deleting water days, but then we have the flow sensor part that's going to shut our system down if we have a broken head or broken main line and uh, send out a, a remote text or email alert message to the client. Exactly. And actually some of our school systems say, you know, let's say it's a weekend and there's, you know, kids on the field, something like that, but everybody's home on the weekend. And the irrigation technician, he's at home with his family, as everyone wants to be on a Saturday. But luckily, you know, he'll just get an immediate alert, um, so he can either, it'll all, either automatically shut down the entire water system to prevent any sort of water leaks, um, and also, he doesn't have to go and get into his truck and drive 30 minutes, waste, you know, half of his Saturday, go down there, turn something off, drive back home, those kinds of things. So that's saving, you know, just staff efficiency, time, um, energy, you know, being more green. You don't have to do more truck rolls and all that kind of stuff. So we've actually noticed the flow, adding flow sensing to systems is such a huge benefit. And, and where you have situations where we have a parking lot or, or a basketball court or something in between, you guys have some solutions where we can actually tap on to an existing station in the field, say station 12, and add a flow sensor and master valve without having to trench all the way back to the exactly. controller. Exactly. Yeah, we have two new products too, well, relatively new. We have the flow link and the flow share, and they're um, actually on the screen right now, the top left and the top right. And those help for different scenarios, one controller, several controllers, whatever you may have, definitely, you know, reduces the need for all that costly trenching, you know, these sites that you've had there forever, you don't want to have to go in and have to trench under an entire parking lot and all these kinds of things. That's just, that's just a total nightmare. So, yeah, flow is huge right now, and it's saving water, saving time, efficiency, and saving money, really. Um, so actually, before I switch over to Hydroscape, um, David, do you have any other, you know, kind of last-minute tips for anyone for, you know, fighting this drought? Um, anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, really, it's um, it's not about turning everything off. We don't really want to do that because then there's a um, increased cost for maintenance. It's it's looking at how you use the water and doing it and basically using the water smartly. Smartly. Completely makes sense. Healthy landscapes don't have to be overwatered. You can water them smart, still save water, and have healthy landscapes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, well David, David yes. when, uh, before you uh, started the initial uh, installation of controllers, what, uh, what savings were you expecting, and uh, what was the uh, percentage of savings that would have been satisfactory to you? My job was to save 20%. Okay. But once I saw the numbers, because really it has to do a lot with money for my job. My job is to save the school district as much money as possible. So once I saw the 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 twenty percent savings, but I saw a a twenty nine to forty to even a sixty percent increase in rates, I realized that that's not enough. So really it was, okay, this is a bigger problem than just the drought. It's a bigger problem than just water conservation. This is a this is taking money from the kids. This is taking money from the classroom. We've got to we've got to handle this hugely. So I'm actually we've I just did the bills this month and uh we're actually sitting at forty five percent reduction now. That's with great. April with April and May sitting at 50, uh, 51 and 52 percent. That's um, huge. It's huge, but I'm still not happy. <laughs> I, want, I, I would like to see our school district actually get to uh, the, seven, the 60 to 70 percent reduction. Wow. I just touched on it a minute ago about the health of uh, watering correctly. Uh, after running in full ET management, how is the overall health of your sites? I can tell which site. I can go to a site now. I can tell which sites are green maps. I can tell which sites are using MP rotors. It's basically 
it's extremely apparent on the health. The the fields that have been done uh, have been remapped. Um, they are looking fantastic. The weeds are pretty much gone, and grass is filled in. That's great. That's great. Well, so uh, let's switch it over to uh, Hydroscape. Um, again, we have Eric and Steve on the line, so um, I'll let I'll just hand it over to you guys. Tell us a little bit about um, Hydroscape as a whole. Um, how long you guys have been around your locations and all that? Oh uh, yeah, Hy Hydroscape's been around since uh, 1975. We have 17 uh, locations throughout Southern California to help you guys out, all the way from uh, Valencia, all the way down to Chula Vista and uh, Palm Springs. Uh, we have a, a full service uh, technical services department, so we do controller and system repair and training and help with installation. And uh, we have a, a on-site service technician so we can dispatch to replace controllers and give you loaners and uh, get you up and running as quick as possible. Great. And you guys also have a location in Hawaii, is that correct? Yeah, yes, we do. We have a location on Oahu servicing uh, all of the islands in Hawaii as well. Awesome. I will volunteer to go there and uh, check it out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know you guys have um, installed weather track at a couple different sites. You want to um, do a little background as to a couple different sites you guys have weather track installed on? Yeah, we've uh, we've been so we've been a primary partner of weather track since 2004, and uh, we've worked with a number of different school districts, uh, universities, Caltrans. Um, uh, large retail establishments and upgrading with weather track and wireless web-based control versus the old style central control where we had radios and software and other types of communications equipment. All of that has kind of given way to the new web-based systems. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these um, uh, companies and establishments see this more as just saving water, but they see it as a liability tool and a tool to reduce runoff, uh, such as on the asphalt streets where the water uh, degrades the asphalt and the other assets. So it's a win-win it's for everybody. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, so tell me a little bit about um, you guys' technical services department. What, what exactly does that mean? What do you guys do? Steve, do you want to take that? Uh, well, Hydroscape Technical Services, we do uh, prefabrication of controller assemblies. It's basically a drop-in and uh, wire it up and, and, and go. We do uh, certification after installation so that the architects or the, or the cities, municipalities, or schools know that it has been installed properly uh, by the contractor. Uh, we also do uh, in-field support, uh, technical repairs. Uh, we, do, uh, we have extended warranties on our assemblies. Um, we are manufacturer trained and approved for repairs, uh, and uh, we have uh, we do this from San Diego to Santa Barbara. Great. So you guys are throughout Southern California, then. Yes. Great. Um, so besides, uh, you know, things like weather track, smart irrigation controllers, do you guys have any other sort of suggestions or tips for? you know, all of us Californians just for reducing their water use? Uh, there's all types of different uh, applications that you can use. The high efficiency nozzles, of course, the low volume, uh, the, the slower the water is applied, the, the better it absorbs into the, uh, into the, into the soil for penetration. Um, uh, of course, the California friendly plants, and the uh, watering times is a big factor. You don't want to be watering, of course, during the afternoon where it dissipates. Um, and also high pressure uh, is, is a major factor in uh, wasting water. If it's fogging, it's, it's not being used properly, and it's basically dissipating into the atmosphere. Got it. Are you guys seeing a lot of um, any sort of turf replacement or lots of change in plants down in Southern California? Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, rockscapes are, are popping up in Southern California. A lot of a lot of areas that I'm I'm visiting, uh, the artificial turf is is coming in. I, I don't think people really uh, want to use the artificial turf, uh, but they may be being forced into it in a sense, uh, getting their rebates. I think they uh, I think they'll prefer the, the using the turf and to do that the ET. Uh, management controllers are, are going to help them keep their turf. 
Got it. in place. Definitely. Uh, well, before I get on to uh, any audience questions, and then uh, we do have a special offer that I'd like to talk about as well. Do Eric and Steve, do you guys have any other you know suggestions or comments you want to add about Hydroscape? No, I mean uh, uh, we're we're happy to come out and assess your sites, take a look at what you have, uh, make some suggestions with flow and uh, upgrading to the web-based systems uh, anytime, anywhere in Southern California. Steve Fry, myself, or Charles, we're happy to help out. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, uh, we do have a couple audience questions. We have a couple more minutes just as we're tying up. So if anyone else has any remaining questions for either, either David, Eric, or Steve, feel free to type those questions in the Q&A section on the right-hand side. Um, I did get a couple email questions. Uh, the first one is, um, how would we go about finding out if there are any sort of rebates available for, for anything, um, anything from smart irrigation controllers, are there also um, rebates available for those other items that you said about saving water, like high efficiency nozzles? What type of rebates are usually available? Okay, I can answer that. Awesome. Um, basically, it's, it's contact your um, your water provider, and if you go down to their office or um, or you call their customer service, they'll be able to let you know. Um, exactly what the rebates are. Uh, currently, the rebates that I know of are um, for controllers. Um, they will give, it depends on which agency, each agency has its own different types of funding, and how they want to use that money is up to them. So controllers, uh, you can get rebates for new, um, new irrigation heads, uh, so, such as the MP rotors, um, which there was a, a photograph of one um, in a slide earlier. Um, you can get rebates for turf removal. Hmm. And I think you can actually get free uh, soil sensors and rain, uh, rain sensors as well. So right. there's a huge variety. Uh, you can also get free spray nozzles, free buckets, free shower heads, that type of thing from your water provider. Great. So, so basically the first step would be find out who, first of all, who your local water agency is, contact them, whether it's a website, go down there, talk to them. Um, is the process for applying for rebates rel relatively straightforward and easy that you've found? From what I've heard with turf removal, a lot of people try to do it after the fact. Um, and you need to do the application first. Got it. Have an engineer at the water district look at the, look at it, get it approved, then do the project. Got it. That definitely makes sense. Um, actually, we did just get a question from someone in the audience. Um, what can be used to irrigate trees? Maybe Eric or Steve, if you guys could answer that one. Steve, go ahead. The uh, the weather track controllers you can. Uh, uh, basically program what you're watering, uh, whether it be turf, ground cover, or trees. Uh, you can also select root depths of the plant that will also help make the proper adjustments in the controller for watering. Are, are they referring to uh, like the root zone watering systems as well, like the deep root zone watering systems? I'm sure, yes. Okay, I mean, most of those products are, are available through Hydroscape, and, and like Steve said, I mean, the weather track controller is fully compatible uh, when it comes to watering deep rooted trees. It, it, pretty standard in the industry are the uh, deep uh, root zone watering systems. Mm -hmm. And another thing, too, about weather track is there's so many different variables you can, you can set for everything from soil type to the slope to how much shade. There's in every all those things go into um, all the calculations to determine how much the system waters every type of plant. So that's another great one too. Well, perfect. Um, so David, um, Eric, and Steve, is there anything else you guys want to comment on before I go ahead and um, tell it, everybody about the special offer? It looks like there's another question from Melinda Weinrich. We have residents with the HydroPoint system. Did you see that? I did not. Can you go ahead and read it then? It says, we have residents with a HydroPoint system that have recently added a flow sensor and master valve. They have a HydroPoint controller and now need to add a flow link. How can they go about purchasing that? Contacting an installer, the customers in Riverside County. 
Well, any of our Hydroscape branches uh, obviously sell the complete line of uh, HydroPoint products, including the FlowLink and the HydroPoint brand of uh, flow sensors. Um, if, if, if I could get in direct contact with you, I could give you that information or, or send a quote over to the client for the flow sensor and the, and the flow link. That's not a problem. Well, perfect. Um, and so also, I'll just say as well, if anyone has any questions, you can always go to hydropoint.com or hydroscape.com. And actually, that brings me to our special offer, um, a joint partnership between Hydropoint and Hydroscape. We are doing a risk-free weather track controller plus adding in flow sensing to any site. It's a 90-day trial, um, so it's a special offer we have right now. And if anyone has any questions or wants to take advantage of that or wants to contact anyone at Hydroscape, has any questions, wants some site visits, feel free to email us at info at hydropoint.com. Um, and basically we'll be able to, this email address will go to both Hydroscape and Hydropoint. So no, no need to question who it's going to go to. Um, just send an email to that email address and we will make sure you are taken care of. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. We are recording this and um, the final recording and the special offer will all be available on our landing page in a couple hours and the website is hydropoint.com slash webinar dash schools. So feel free to check out that URL in a couple hours to uh, review the webinar and take advantage of that special offer. David, Eric, and Steve, thank you all three for joining us today. It was a pleasure. And David, it was great hearing about your success and great to hear that you guys are increasing your uh, percentage of water reduction. That's great to hear. Yes, thank you very much. Great. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and have a great rest of your day.